This devotional comes from John chapter 14 and bears the title of Spiritual Graduations. If you've not read the text recently, let me review it for you using the English Standard Version. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. As a professor, I know that we will oftentimes sit at graduations at the commencement ceremony and say, we are proud of our students, we are proud of our graduates, we are proud of all that they have learned. But at the same time, we all have lived long enough as professionals, as people who have been in ministry, to know that having graduated with a diploma does not equal having all of the gifts, graces, abilities, and experience necessary to be excellent in the work that they're being sent out to do. I sometimes cringe at the thought of those early congregations I served straight out of seminary and for about four years while I was in seminary. One would only have to imagine how many times they would shake their head at me and say, all right, this guy's a rookie. He doesn't quite know what he's doing, but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt for now. The same is true here, I believe, as we look at this text in the 14th chapter of John. John is not trying to capture all of the uh, broad scope of what it is to be a follower of Jesus as he tells this intimate incident in the upper room. Unlike any of the other gospel writers, John has this extensive and detailed capture of what Jesus has now said to his disciples. He's trying to give an insider's view of what's going on. And if you were tracking on the text, you'll see that there is that sense in which John is giving not just a, a view of the interactions around the table, but the teachings of Jesus. And you'll notice from the text that I read that I added the verse just before the, the text that was cited. That is, this question from Judas, not Iscariot, not the bad Judas, so to speak, but the good Judas, that says, Lord, why are you manifesting yourself to us, but not to the world? And we all sometimes run across those mixed agendas, those agendas that say, you know, there may be one purpose or one intent that we have in mind, but there may be others who have different intents and different agendas. And for Judas, at least, it was, isn't it time, Lord? Isn't it time for you to finally conquer these Romans? Isn't it time to finally bring out those things which God had promised, this promised Messiah now delivering us from our captivity? But this agenda was not Christ's agenda. And as Jesus now teaches the disciples, he gives this beautiful kind of model, this beautiful kind of image that says, you know, in the Old Testament, we know that the, the law of God resides in the temple. We know that as we read the, the prophets, that this law can be written upon our hearts and the spirit can abide with all of, the, of God's people. But now we have this expansion that Jesus provides, as Craig Keener talks about it, this expansion that says not only does the law reside in the temple, not only can the law be written out upon our hearts, but now the very triune God can live among us, can dwell with us, that our graduation isn't just about how well we know the law, 
But our graduation by the power of the Holy Spirit is that we now have God living in us by the power of the Spirit. That we now have the living God, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit living in us and through us, residing and dwelling with us. And because of that, we have this beautiful kind of reality that we are growing more and more in love with God. And that love plays itself out, not only in obedience, allowing the law of God and the truths and principles of God's word to, to transform us, but also in fruit that we will now live out our lives in a way that bears fruit, that points to the God who lives inside of us. And as people see us, they will see the fruit of the Spirit. They will see the fruit of God's faithfulness and the Spirit's power through us. And because of that, they will see God more clearly. As we do that, we realize that there will be those occasions when the Spirit might have to be our helper. The Spirit will have to be the one to come alongside of us and to help us and to help us walk through these real life incidents, these real life challenges. The Spirit indeed will be our teacher, will help the law not only to be true, but to come alive in us. And the Spirit will be that one who, because he is present in us and is helping us to be all that, that we need to be, the Spirit will be the one to remind us to tap us on the shoulder, to whisper in our ear, to say, now you remember what you learned? You remember that experience I walked with you through? That's still true today. That's still how you can live your life today in spite of all the distractions. And we know that in a troubled and uh, fearful world that we live in, it is easy to be distracted. And that's why Jesus said, I'm giving my peace to you. Don't be troubled, don't be afraid, my peace will reside in you, and that peace will be more than enough. That peace will be more than enough to help you be centered, grounded, confident, and bold, even in the most troubling and fearful situations. As the Spirit does that work in us, as the triune God resides in us, then there is a powerful kind of witness that God now does in and through us beyond our own ability, beyond our own capacity, because we know the one who has gone now to be with the Father, because we now have this perspective 2,000 years later. The one who has died on the cross is risen again and is now with the, at the Father's right hand. That one will never leave us, never forsake us. And as we mature in our faith, as we become more and more like Christ, as Christ living in us as, a, as part of the triune God, that, that second person of the Trinity by the power of the Holy Spirit, then we are transformed from glory to glory. And our lives do make a difference to the witness and power of God's faithfulness in every person who says yes to him. May that same spirit witness in you and through you to glorify our God through his son, Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.